Welcome back. Any 3n plus 1 loop involves a series of up moves in yellow and down moves in blue. If a number's odd, we go up, and if it's even, we go down. Given any sequence of x up moves and k minus x down moves, there's only one number. If you put it into this operation sequence, you get the same number back out. In this case, we get 2, 11 over 13. If that's a positive integer, then we found a cycle of positive integers. But the 3n plus 1 conjecture says that's never going to happen. Now, to figure out what this number is, we previously used this analog computer. We put the pieces where the up moves are, then multiply increasing powers of 2 by decreasing powers of 3, add them all up, and divide by 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. Okay, if we do that, we can get the values for all the members of all the loops of length 8 with 5 up moves. The outer uh, loop here is special. It's called the circuit loop with all up moves preceding all down moves. We previously showed that no circuit loop of any size can contain integers. The rest of the loops are arranged in this really cool nested pattern. The one in the very middle is also special. We've been calling it the high loop. It's the one whose smallest member is highest off the ground of all the same sized loops. In this episode, we're going to also show that no high loop of any size can contain integers. So first, let's remember how we dealt with circuit loops. The smallest member of the circuit loop happens to have a very special form uh, that looks like this. If that were an integer, then this would also be an integer, and so would this, and so would this, because the denominator doesn't have any factors of 2, it's odd. Then we showed that the numerator here grows less than 2 to the x, while the denominator grows more than 2.5 to the x. Um, and so this is going to be less than 1, and it can't be an integer. Now the last fact here came from some monstrously complicated transcendental number theory developed by Alan Baker in the 1960s. And we said it's kind of sad that we need such heavy artillery to prove that uh, this simple expression can never be an integer for any k or x. Okay, let's turn to the high loop now. To make the high loop, we space out the up moves as evenly as possible, then slot each one to the left. Here's the operation sequence for the high loop with k equals 8, x equals 5. Some people call this the devil staircase. Uh, if you make really long ones, you can see that they're very irregular. Unfortunately, the smallest member of the high loop doesn't have a simple form like the circuit loop. Because of this floor function, we can't really get a grip on the actual value, though we can work out that it's between this and this. But could it be an integer? Uh, it seems complicated, but I was very happy to find out the answer is no, and here's the idea. Uh, if the smallest member of the high loop is an integer and the largest member of the high loop is also an integer, then this expression is obviously an integer as well. And uh, for this example, if we plug in the smallest and largest actual loop values, uh, we get that um, this equals 2 to the 7th over 13. But this can't be an integer. 2 to the n can't be a multiple of some odd number. No matter what we multiply 13 by, we'll never obtain a power of 2. Uh, and so we get a contradiction. Uh, and so the um, original high cycle can't contain integers. And this is not a fluke. The same thing happens with other high loops. Um, here's the one for k equals 13, x equals 8. 3 times the smallest minus the largest plus 1 gives us 2 to the 12th over 1631. Happens every time. Um, in fact, we always get 2 to the k minus 1 over 2 to the k minus 3 to the x. So how did we come up with this formula, and how can we make sure it always works? Okay, so here's an operation sequence for the smallest member of a high loop. Now, if we rotate it this way, we get the highest member of the high loop. And the completely crazy thing is that these two operation sequences are identical, except for uh, the smallest member where we start with an up move and the largest member where we end with an up move. So when we put these two sequences into the computer, the factors are very similar, and we can take advantage of that. So let's start with the sum of these four factors, call it u. Um, to get the smallest member, we shift these guys to the right and add an up move at the beginning. That adds um, 2 to the 0 times 3 to the x minus 1, and when we shift all these guys, we multiply u by 2. To get the largest member, we shift 
um, the same guys, but add an up move at the end. This adds 2 to the k minus 1 times 3 to the 0. And now when we shift, we multiply u by 2, but because the extra up move at the end, we got to also multiply u by 3. Okay, so now coming back to 3 times the smallest minus the largest plus 1. Uh, that equals this, which equals this, which equals this. But we know the last quantity is not an integer, so we have our contradiction. Uh, by the way, the shared operation sequences here, um, you know, in the middle, it's a palindrome. And also, the whole thing only works if k and x are co-prime, which is okay, because we took care of the earlier, uh, of the earlier uh, cases. Okay, pretty satisfying. Now, if we could only deal with the rest of these loops in between the circuit loop and the high loop. Okay, see you next time.